okay um on my personal page i tried to go on medical monday and people were not able to get on i tried to go on to the event page and now to my um uh, personal page so hopefully you guys will be able to find me here sorry i'm trying to get this set up i um my battery is very very low so i'm trying to get some um hey doris <laughs> dorsey's oh uh, look at you you got on hey tanisa thank you hey can get i see ya thank you guys for uh following me hopefully you like and invite and share getting your people on here I'm trying to get this thing set so i can um, so you guys, oh, sorry. Hey, Jonah, thank you for joining on. I've been trying to get people on to, um, hear what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about some very important stuff tonight. Um, I'm having a hard time with my camera because, uh, there we go. I thought that was it. Um, so you guys can hear what I'm talking about tonight. So please like, invite, and share. I'm just going to hold it. How about that? Um, I'm going to be talking about flu and your heart, heart healthy month and you. We're going to be talking about that tonight. Um, I'm really excited about the information I'm about to share with you because you know we're in the height of flu season and we're having some um, staggering results in regards to the flu. Hey, um, Marita, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. I see Miles on here. Thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. I, I tried it to do my, it on my Medical Monday page, but people were unable to log in and log on. So I hate that I have to go on my personal page, but I guess, I don't know if that's what they want me to do or forcing me to do. I am clueless. Who is that? I think I saw Mona. Um, thank you for getting on. And um, Hey, Mona Ali. Thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share as you guys come on. It is very important that you do that when you get on. It's very, very important. Um, what I want to talk about, I'm trying to give you guys a little bit uh, time to get on um, so we can, um, so I can talk about what I want to talk about, but um, I've been doing this now for 15 minutes. This has never, never, never happened before, but anyway, um, hey Patrice, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. We got a lot of information that we're going to be talking about tonight um, in regards to the flu and heart disease and you um, because a lot of people have a lot of questions about vaccines being that it is afro-american history month i'm going to give you a um a little bit of information about the contribution to vaccines from the continent of africa i talked about this when i talked about flu vaccines before but i think it's more appropriate now that it is african african american history month so um, i'm going to uh, dive right in and for the sake of time Okay, so we're going to talk about, uh, um, his name is on Onesimus, or I like to say Onesimus, because it's one, N-I-S, uh, must. So it's, oh, 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 hey, Chaz, thank you for coming on. Please like, invite, and share. So in the late 1600s, was an African-American born man, uh, well, African born man, held by the slave by a Puritan minister by, by the name of Cotton Mather. Cotton Mather was also in the medical profession, but most of his medical uh, fines were given to him by an African, okay, by the name of one cinemas, or however you want to say that, but I say one cinemas, okay? So what the outbreak was, smallpox at the time. So with the African um, outbreak, what he did was, it's like a little boil with pus in it. So what the African slave did, he took pus from the smallpox, made a small incision in himself and in his master at the time, which was Cotton Mathers. And what they did was, it's called inoculation. And what it did was, it made them immune to the smallpox. Hey Jennifer, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share uh, as you come on. And so um, um, he was placed, uh, the place of Osinimus is unknown um, because back in the slave days, of course, they were snatching people from the African continent and their language barrier, um, um, as far as language or whatever, they could care less where they came from. So it was not documented where he was born. But um, it was for certainty that uh, Cotton Mather, his slave master, 
referred to his ethnicity as Goromanti, which was referred to the Central Sudan or the Koromanti Akon of Ghana. Um, so they tried to do some research to find out where he was. So that was the reason where he said that they basically came from. So, um, so Mathers took custody of the slave and what he did was basically he introduced vaccines to the United States or to the 13 colonies at that time. Hey Phyllis, thank you for joining in and sharing, uh, getting on. Thanks Maria. Thank you for invite, like, like, and share please. So, um, a lot of people ask me, do I believe in vaccines? Um, should I get a vaccine? These are the questions that I hear all the time as a medical doctor. You know, should I get the vaccines? Are they safe? Um, hey, Jennifer, thank you for watching. Okay, so this is, I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of what I think and how I feel. Hey, Essie, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. Um, this is what I feel about, about it vaccines the inoculation process is a safe process and it is a well thought out process that is um centuries year, centuries year century years old okay so does it work yes the problem that i have is the manufacturing process um we have no control of the manufacturers they are uh, owned and controlled by pharmaceutical companies so they put other things in the vaccines that uh, people have questions through down through the years. Is it safe for children? Is it safe for adults? Hey, Tina, thank you for joining on. Um, hey, Tika, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. So the question is, you know, the additives that they put in it, be it mercury. I don't even know why they put mercury in vaccines, especially children vaccine. Mercury is a toxic metal i don't i have i still haven't been able to figure that out hey renee um from a medical perspective why would you put something like that into a vaccine um i think they said it's part of the preserving process but i i don't get it i i, I still don't understand it from a medical perspective so from inoculation being part of a vaccine process that originated on the continent continent of africa that was proven to be safe uh, hey Freddie thank you for joining back in the 16 and 17 hundreds to uh, eradicate smallpox vaccines or inoculations is good the matter the manufacturing and the preserving process is questionable so this is what I tell people when they ask me that question. It's very, very hard for me to make a recommendation because I don't know your whole history um, due to the fact that um, the recommendations for like the flu vaccine and small children and the elderly. Um, hey, Robert. Hey, cuz. How are you? Thank you for joining on. Or, you ha or a person has what they call a chronic illness, um, which is heart disease, which we're going to talk about in a moment because it is Heart Healthy Awareness Month. Um, um, a breathing problems. Hey cousin. Hey Linda. Or breathing problems like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a um, where the bronchioles clamp down on a person. It can be asthma. It can be emphysema, um, uh, or you know chronic lung disease, or someone that has diabetes, which to me is an autoimmune disease, which helps suppress. The immune function in a person so um, these are the people that they recommend that they get the flu vaccine okay so 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 the question then becomes should they take it so every year you hear something different hey Jay thank you for joining on so you hear on the news about the flu vaccine or the uh, flu uh, and you should, should go get your flu vaccine hey Alicia thank you for joining on now, as a medical professional, I'm going to be honest with you, you're going you're gonna to look and peek into my life right now. I have been a doctor now over 20 plus years now. Do I get the flu vaccine every year? I'm going to say no, I don't. I have not. I will say within my 20 year career, I may have gotten the flu vaccine twice. Reason being is because it was mandatory for me to have privileges at a hospital. But when I moved away from that arena, 
I was like, why should I get it? You know, um, but this year I felt like I should have, I should got, should get it. Um, I, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I felt like I should get it. So I did get it this year. And a lot of people, hey, Danielle, thank you for joining on and getting on. A lot of people say, especially in the African American community, they don't like trust vaccines. They don't like vaccines. It makes them feel sick after they get it and they don't want it. So as a doctor, I don't force them to do it. But I explain to them what the current recommendations are and the guidelines in the medical field so they can make an informed choice and decision whether or not they should get the flu vaccine or not. Okay, so that's my stance on the flu vaccine. There is currently some literature that has been released um, um, where they're saying that uh, the flu vaccine, some of them are not made appropriately and they feel that it doesn't cover the strain that's released. So let me talk about that for a minute. Hey, Marsha, thank you for joining on. Hey, Cassandra, please like, invite, and share. The flu vaccine is never the same every year or every time the flu season is released because the flu mutates all the time. So what they do is a part of manufacturing or creating the vaccine, they find the virulent or the uh, strain or the strain that is causing mortality or death and they create a vaccine to prevent people from getting it that is inoculated with it. Um, from getting the flu. Um, they try to say, or they try to tell people, hey, Teresa, that if you get the flu vaccine, and some people say, well, I get sick. They try to say, and some reading says, no, you don't get sick. Um, it all depends on the individual. Linda, hey, Linda, thank you for joining. I'm going to tell you something. When I got the flu vaccine this year, I did get some nasal congestion. congestion. Um, I did get a hoarse voice. And um, after that cleared up, then I had this irritating, annoying cough. So, uh, which required me me to get some antibiotics. Because when I went to go talk to the pharmacist about it, we were laughing about it. He was like, you know you need to get you some antibiotics. I was like, I know. So, not only did I get um, a little uh, sick behind it, um, I got a secondary infection that required antibiotics. So everybody is different. That was my experience. That may not be your experience. And this is what I tell people. You have to go by what your health history is. You have to go talk to your doctor about it. Discuss the risk versus the benefits of it. Because now there is some current literature out saying that flu vaccine can be cardioprotective. Um, I don't, I just read that. I don't know um, the study in regards to how did they can't come up with that but they're saying people that do have cardiac disease or cardiac problems that the flu vaccine they should get it because if they actually get the flu it can be deadly so those are the type of things that you have to weigh if you're one of these people that fits any of those descriptions remember someone that has cardiac disease with cardiac diseases congestive heart failure cardiomyopathy which means the muscles don't work like they should or cardiomegaly which means the heart is much bigger than what it should be if a person has had chronic high blood pressure over a, a long period of time and now their heart is not beating like it should um, palpitations any of those type of things needing stent placement having triple bypass surgery all that other kind of stuff swelling in the ankles swelling in the feet um, unexplained all of that is related to some cardiovascular issue they are saying that you, or they are recommending that a person get a flu vaccine um, if someone has chronic uh, lung problems uh, diabetes um, so all those things you definitely need to take an account and talk to your doctor about whether or not you fit that description so um let's talk about this here um a recent influenza infection was unrecognized comorbidity in about 10 percent of hospitalization so this is what they're talking about heart people influenza did not predict acute mi but vaccine was significantly protective but underused so what they're saying, if someone had an acute MI or or what they call uh, acute mark 
myocardial infarction. What is that? That's a medical term. So I'm going to explain to you what that means. That means when someone has a heart attack, the blood flow doesn't get to the muscle in the tissue of the heart. So part of that heart muscle dies. So it's an infarct. It's not getting the blood tissue that it needs. So the heart cells die. So they're saying that if a person gets the vaccine and if they're exposed to, um, I have an MI and they're exposed to the flu, that that flu vaccine prevents them from having, um, from dying from it. So basically that's what they're saying, okay? So um, so those are the things that you need to, to, to talk about. So let's talk about heart healthiness right now while we're talking about the heart. Um, keep it simple. I say this all the time with high blood pressure. No salt, no pop, no pork. Now, there are some people that are, are the reverse of hypertension and there's some people that have low blood pressure I, I somebody tagged me on a Facebook post there is a reason why that this person requires a whole lot of salt to keep their blood pressure up so why um, hey Eric thank you for joining on please and like invite and share so the question then becomes why does this person require a lot of salt to keep their blood pressure up so they have to take a whole bunch of salt you just throwing salt at a situation you need to find out the reason why you require a whole bunch of salt. And here at Bethesda Holistic Center, we have diagnostic testing, which we can help you find that out. We have vitamin testing. We also have hormonal testing and a neurotransmitter testing that we can actually pinpoint the reason why that you require a whole lot of salt. So, um, hey, Tabita, thank you for uh, joining on. Please like, invite, and share. So... Instead of just throwing salt at the situation, let's find out what the situation is. I use this analogy a lot when I come on. It's like being in a boat with a hole in it. And you got this water gushing in from the hole in the boat. And you got this pot trying to pour out the water. So the salt to, to address that situation is the pot. But that's the holistic center along with Dr. Patterson. We're going to see what the hole is and patch the hole up. So, and then we could take the pot and pour out the water so the bone won't sink. So, but anyway, so you need to contact us um, at 248-356-1111. Our website is www.bw-center.com. We do have a uh, download, free download today. Um, please, guys, when I give you this information, I don't, uh, hey, Leanne, thank you for joining on. I appreciate you. Please go on, go on there and get the information. It's free. We're not asking you to uh, download it and then pay a fee to download it. Um, we do have some products on there that's called Immune Boost because for those of you that are under the sound of my voice, hey Sierra, um, when I talked about the benefits of inoculation versus vaccine, um, um, the issue is to me the manufacturing process. And so we have what we call something that's called Immune Boost. It's a powder that you can put in juice water or in your shakes. Um, um, if you do smoothies and stuff like that to help bo boost your immune system. Um, there's also a product that we call Heart Health that also helps to promote healthy heart because it does have, and it's all food based. It's nothing pharmaceutical or anything like that. It's all natural because I'm assuming that you guys are on here because you do want to take the natural route to help uh, get your body where it needs to be to, uh, to have longevity and to be in a position to for your body to heal itself. So go to www.bw-center.com forward slash mm. Take a look at the products. Um, and then get, get the free download and get the information that we're talking about today. And that you can refer to it and look at, at it or uh, take it into the doctor's office that you want to go to. Um, and uh, Or talk to your doctor about it. Look, I've been listening to this uh, lady for almost a year now. This is some of the things that she recommend. What do you think? Hey, Susan, thank you for joining on. And if you want me to talk to your doctor, I can share information with your doctor too, what I have been finding out and what I have been doing with, with my patients, which has been most successful. Um, hey, Linnell, uh, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. Again, that free download is www.bw-center.com forward slash mm for Medical Monday. 
and the two products that I'm talking about is immune boost to get your immune system up especially during this time now that the old school folks say this is pneumonia weather child you know from going hot to cold today I think we got close to 60 I think we're gonna get close to 60 again tomorrow and then it drops down really low again so we really need with your body going through this extreme bouts of temperature your body has to acclimate to the extreme adjustments of the temperature which works on your immune system so does the temperature really play a role in you getting the flu or getting sick or getting a cold um, in a way it does but not really this is how it works it's not the actual temperature or going outside without a coat that causes you to catch a pneumonia or a flu or a cold what happens is the extreme fluctuations in temperature affects your immune system. So when you're exposed to a virus or a bacteria, then you are more susceptible to getting it um, and being sick or cause sickness or illness from it. So um, if you want more information in regards to vaccines or anything like that, um, there's going to be a... Uh, where you can set up a consultation you can have 45 minutes of my time uh, it's going to be posted here on the website we can actually I can actually talk to you and uh, because a lot of questions people may have are personal and people don't want to talk about it or put it in the comment section general information if you have a general question that is not totally personal whatever feel free to put it in the comment section hey Marvin thank you for joining on hey Maria um, Please uh, uh, do that for me. That will be greatly appreciated if you uh, get in touch with me. And then we can have a personal conversation outside of this setting um, to keep your business personal because it is your PI personal. Um, also, I want to talk about for a minute too. Um, I did talk about who should get vaccines. I want you to go to the Center of Disease Control, which is the CDC, which is our government website, um, which they give the criteria that I talked about, about the chronic disease, be it heart disease, be it diabetes, be it um, chronic lung disease, and some other things that, um, that they find that should uh, get it. They say for everyone aged six months and older, uh, vaccines is especially important for people with high risk of influenza complication, including pregnant women. So um, one of my jobs, I used to work um, at a satellite for the health department of the city of Detroit. We had pregnant women and a pediatric side. Hey Warren, thank you for joining on. Hey David, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. And so we would recommend that pregnant women um, do get the flu vaccine. Um, due to the fact that it says it has an effect on their immune system. Um, the, uh, years back when I was doing that, it was a lot of deaths of pregnant women at that time that w was exposed to the flu vaccine. Again, I, I want to say this again. I may sound like a broken record, but the inoculation process is centuries years old. We really don't know how old it is because it came from the continent of Africa where people were actually like smallpox, which I was telling you about that an African showed his slave master how to inoculate themselves to keep them from dying from the smallpox, which a vaccine was created, which eradicated that disease from off the face of the earth. Because once you inoculate a person or give that person exposure to that bacteria, your own immune system builds up, up be able to fight against it. And that's the premise of vaccines all vaccines really but the manufacturing process and the other things that they add into it is where i have an issue with it but again you have to outweigh to the risk versus the benefit for you so if you're someone under the sound of my voice hey drill thank you for joining on hey debbie um um, um you have to make sure that you have a conversation you know with your family a conversation with your doctor if this is something that you want to do again I said within my 20 year career I may have had the flu vaccine twice I decided this year to get it um, by the leading of the Holy Spirit really because there's been so many strange things happening um, in our community strange things happening globally really but I really want to make sure that I was protected and being that I do what I do 
um, I'm around a lot of people that are sick and I go at actually in their environment in their homes I felt led to get it this year I don't know it may be a little, a little different next year I don't know but um, I'm really led by the Holy Spirit whether or not I should get that or not um, and being that I, I, I'm relatively healthy, I try to eat right, I try to make sure I stay hydrated. Hydration is key during this flu season. Why is hydration really, really key? And I'm going to tell you why. For you personally, you have to stay hydrated because you're, hey, Nicola, thank you for joining. Um, please like, invite, and share. You got to stay hydrated. And this is the reason why. Your mucous membranes are your first line of protection against flu and bacteria. So if you hydrated your mucous mu membranes are moist and they perform a barrier for those bacteria and viruses to get through for them not to get through if you're dehydrated your mucous membranes are dry so if your mucous membranes are dry pores open up for those viruses and bacteria to get through so you got to make sure that you are hydrated during this time of season, the flu season, because the heat is on, which is drying, um, and all that other kind of stuff. So for those of you who are avid uh, medical Mondayers, or M&Ms as I call you, you know how much you need to be drinking of water daily. So if you're, you're someone under the sound of my voice, a certain weight, you got to take your weight, divided by what? 2.2. And that's the ounces. And if you want to know how many bottles that is equivalent to, you need to take those ounces and divide it by 16.9, which is an average water bottle size. So um, that's how much water you need to be drinking. Unfortunately, the more you weigh, the more you, need, you require. Mm -hmm. So since I've been doing Medical Monday, my, I have been releasing the pounds. I've been releasing the weight. So my water requirement has decreased drastically. So I'm so happy about that. Woo! <laughs> so um, make sure you go to the uh, CDC to find out the guidelines for the different type of, of vaccines. Hey, Charlene, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. Um, we talked about vaccines and additives and toxins. Um, uh, so uh, let me click this right here. I was, tr I was told to review this before I came on today. I haven't had a chance. My day was one of those days. Um, so there is a naturalnews.com vaccine ingredient side effects. I, I think I'm kind of familiar with it because I had told you guys that, um, um, the inoculation process, the premise of doing it, it uh, vaccines, is well thought out and well well documented. The benefits of it. Hey, Teresa, uh, thank you. Can you overhydrate your body? Yes, you can. Overhydration um, can be just as bad as underhydration. Um, uh, and let me tell you why. Because if you're dehydrated, it can cause muscle cramps and stuff like that, um, headaches, lightheaded, dizziness, nausea, even vomiting if you're dehydrated. How can you also tell that you're dehydrated? You look in your eyes, you see how my, moist my eye thing here? My, um, you can see how it's glistening. If that's not glistening, you're dehydrated. And you can look in them oral mucosa of somebody's mouth. If it's pasty, your mouth feel pasty. You know how people get the white stuff in the corners of their mouth and all that stuff, they're dehydrated. You also can pinch somebody's skin. It's called tinting. If you pinch it, it kind of stays there, and then it and it stays like in a tint shape. That's called tinting for dehydration. Overhydration can throw your electrolytes off, which means you can also still have muscle cramping and stuff with with uh, hydrating uh, overhydration because your electrolytes or your your chemicals in your body now are diluted because of too much water. So yes, you can overhydrate. So you gotta be careful with that. So too much of anything is not good. <laughs> so um, please, if you want to um, get in touch with me and get a, a personal consultation with those personal questions that you don't feel comfortable putting in the comment section, it is posted right now where you can go to the link and schedule a time out of 45 minutes. And we can have, uh, you can book for free. Um, the booking is free, but the time is not. So you get 45 minutes for 75 bucks. I answer any and all your questions, undivided attention, and I can actually get a history from you so I can give you adequate advice 
um, instead of just giving blanket uh, answers to responses that we get here on Facebook Live. Hey, Adrian, thank you for joining. We appreciate that. Um, so again, I need you guys to go to www.bw-center.com forward slash MM for Medical Monday. I want you to look at those two products that we're offering, the immune um, and the heart health. Immune helps build up your immune system, especially this time of the year. You just put it in water or juice or shake. It uh, helps build up your immune system because remember your immune system is in your gut. So I need you to go and look at that. The heart health too. It helps keep your heart strong. Um, it helps uh, get your body in a place where it needs to help your body to adjust its own blood pressure. Because remember natural products, we can't say that it diagnoses. It treats or prevent. We can't say that, but we can say that it gets your body in a place where it can heal, help heal itself. So please get on to www.bw-center.com forward slash mm for medical Monday. Please do the free download um, and get that information that is there for you on there. Okay, your heart is a muscular or a muscular. Let's talk about heart right quick. So, um, and I give this analogy all the time. Um, I'm just going to read you something, but then I'm going to give you my analogy. Because the analogy that I normally get sticks with the person. Um, heart is a muscular organ in most animals, which pumps blood through your blood vessels and circulatory system. Blood provides the body with oxygen and nutrients, as well as assists with removal of um, metabolic waste. In humans, the heart is located um, between the lungs in the middle of compartment of the chest. I know sometimes we say it's on the left side, but it's really in the center of your chest. So this is the uh, analogy that I normally give to all my patients. Just think of your body as a house and your heart is the pump and the vessels throughout your body is the plumbing system. And your heart is responsible for pumping that water throughout the whole house to make sure the house uh, plumbing is going the way that it should. So things that clog up your pipes, right? You never should pour grease down the drain, right? Because if you pour grease down the drain, what is it going to do to the plumbing in the house? It's going to back it up. So we're going to say use the grease pouring down the drain as an analogy of cholesterol. Cholesterol, that's what it does. It kind of backs up um, the water or the blood in your body. Hey, Kathy, thank you for uh, getting on. Please like, invite, and share. I'm almost uh, have uh, got 15 more minutes. I've been on, I've been in three locations. I was on my Medical Monday page and then went on my event page. Now I had to go to my personal page. But anyway, please like, invite, and share. So um, getting back to what I was talking about, the analogy of the heart, you never, uh, like your house, you never pour grease down the drain because it backs up the plumbing. So that's what high cholesterol is. You get cholesterol from two sources. You manufacture it yourself and you get it from your foods. So the most uh, you get your cholesterol, high cholesterol is from fried foods and meat sources. Um, you want to have good cholesterol levels. You want to make sure that you get your cholesterol, cholesterol from plant-based sources. Okay. Um, hey, Cheryl, thank you for joining on. Please like, invite, and share. So, um, so good oils or good oils that help uh, keep those levels down. It's like your avocados, your flax seed, your olive oil. Those are good oils that you want to put in your system or into your body. Anything outside of that, you're at risk of elevating your cholesterol. Then there is high cholesterol in people that have genes that uh, create a lot of cholesterol. A lot of people um, have bad cholesterol because they have their lead what we call sedentary lifestyles where they're not, they're not getting and moving like they should. So, so again, let's go back to the house and pouring grease down the drain. You never want to do that. So you never want to do that to your body. You don't want to put grease down this drain. Ah, <laughs> you don't want to put fried food down this drain because it's going to clog up everything. So then the pump has to work harder to get the fluid through those clogged arteries, right? Right. Okay. And then when you have a backup, what do you do have to do in your house? You have to plunge. Yes, and then you have to sometimes you have to snake stuff. This you know how you snake. So snaking in the human body is a as is an analogy of catheterization. You heard of people getting heart calves because they have coronary artery disease or a blockage in their heart because of old uh, cholesterol buildup or inflammation. 
So, uh, do you, uh, yeah, so for information, hey, Lawrence, thank you for joining on. I really do appreciate you joining on. So those are the analogies that I give my patients so they can have a better idea of high cholesterol and high blood pressure and how that ha affects the heart. So let's talk about that again. Clog arteries, clog drains, heart catheterization, snaking out those clog pipes uh, like you would do in a house. That's what happens in the body. So when the heart has to work harder, guess what? Heart is a muscle, right? So the heart is a muscle. What happens with any other muscle that you work out really hard? You break down the muscle and then you build it back up and that muscle gets bigger. You do not want a bigger heart. Mm -mm -mm. You don't want that. Two things happen. Either it, um, it loses space, which uh, allows for a decreased capacity for the blood to fill up and get to the body. So you get decreased blood flow throughout the whole body, which you don't want. The second thing that happens after a while, your body breaks down and build up so many times, you get what we call a d dilatation or expansion of the heart, which doesn't effectively pump like it should because now it's too big. So, and then the third thing that can happen, your heart is like, I'm working real hard. You know what? I'm going to quit on you. I'm tired of pumping against this high pressure, so I'm just going to stop. So, that's what you call a heart attack. So you don't want any of that to happen to you ever, 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 ever. So, so heart health awareness for you to understand how the heart works and the importance of it. That's what we're here today being that is heart healthy awareness month. So, and how does this all go together with the flu vaccine? Again, I told you that there's some new literature out now. They're saying that people that have heart disease, that the flu vaccine can be cardioprotective in regards to them being exposed to the virus, that they may not actually die from the flu virus if they get the vaccine. So again, um, I gave you my point of view from a personal point of view and a medical professional point of view, what I feel about the flu vaccine. It is not my job to tell you, yeah, you better go get one. No, you should not get one. Everyone's circumstances and situation is totally different. And the best decision is an informed decision. So your medical situation may not be like Susie's next door or Joe's across the street. So you have to make you uh, make up your mind what is best for you and what you would like to do. Again, I would like to say, again, the inoculation process is a good process and it's been known and proven to work. I have a question about the manufacturing process, which we do not have control over. So I remember um, us saying this when we were in medical school, um, um, the best thing to do is to make sure you keep your hands clean. And if you're around people, if people that travel a lot or on planes or whatever, I did a group travel doing some ministry work a couple of weeks ago and we all bought masks. So, you know, being on a plane, if you're on a plane, somebody's hacking and coughing, you got to remember that's recirculated air. We don't know what the filtering process or cleaning process is. So don't be afraid or embarrassed about, hey, look, I'm going to wear a mask next to somebody who is coughing. And I'm not trying to be funny. If you got extra, if the person is coughing, offer it to them. I mean, if they get offended, oh, well, but you know, you don't need to be on this plane infecting everybody. Oh, come, come on now. And, and <laughs> And, you, and you've seen it on television, and I like to reiterate it. Please don't cough in your hand because most oftentimes you touch paper and all that other kind of stuff. That, that can be transferable. Best thing to do is to, to cough in your elbow. This time of the year, please don't shake hands. I know that's the cultural hospitable thing here in the United States. You know, you could say, oh, you know, we can bump elbows or whatever the case may be. Even as a medical professional, even as a doctor, you know, if somebody extends to shake my hand, I will, I'm not trying to be funny or anything, I will pull up my hand sanitizer and um, put it on my hand and offer it th to them too. So, do you want to be embarrassed and not sick or, or be, take the risk and not do that and then go home and, get, and have something and catch something and then spread it to your family? So, those are the things that you need to be thinking about. 
um, it's very, very important that you guys take in consideration the time and the seasons that we're living in right now um, um, in regards to the things that we have been seeing, even on television. Um, my heart goes out to the school where the shooting, I just want to say something a little bit about that right now, about the family who lost their children. Um, no one should ever have to lose a loved one to such violence. But um, but there's people that are dying every day, <laughs> um, not only to violence, but sickness, infirmity, and disease. Um, we're seeing things that we have never seen before in the medical profession and even flesh-eating disease. Who ever heard of that? I mean, um, when I started in medical school, there was no such thing. Um, and where did that come from? That came from um, people saying or being demanding with their doctor, um, I want an antibiotic. So let's talk about that uh, flu, heart, and you. There is a difference between a virus and a bacteria. Two different things. A virus is a virus and a bacteria is a bacteria. Okay, what is the difference, Dr. Grayson? I'm going to tell you. A virus is needs a host to, uh, um, to replicate and duplicate itself. So it incorporates into your cells and reproduce. That's what a virus does. And so um, there does antibiotics work on a virus? Um, we are taught, no, it does not. That's what we're taught. So they're saying now you have Tamiflu, you have all these other antivirals that are on the market right now. And they're saying that it should be administered with 40, within 48 hours of being of exposure or feeling like that you're coming down with it. They do a test, which is called a nasal swab, to see if someone is uh, uh, influenza positive. Okay, so that's how they test it, and they say whether or not you have the flu or not, and they give you antiviral. What I tell people, uh, which is the old saying, I also prevention is better than a pound of cure. So make sure you have it hand washing. Make sure that you that you're around people that are are that are uh, also hand washing, hand sanitizing, coughing in their elbows. I mean, it, you know, express the importance of that. Keeping your aerial lysing down, lysol down, or wipe down, and aerosol spray. Don't feel embarrassed about doing that, or think you're hurting somebody's feelings. Everybody wants. And if you're sick, please stay home. Let me say that again. If you're sick. Please stay home. Please don't bring your germs to work. That is so inconsiderate. And for some of you that are under the sound of my voice, and I have a sister that worked with small children at a school, what parent would send a child home with a, to school with a runny nose and a fever? The child Protective Services need to be called. Why would you do that to a baby? Why would you send a baby to school sick? to infect other children. I mean, um, you use all your sick time for you. I don't know, but that is not, that is not right. That is so wrong on so many levels. If you're sick, stay home. I know we go to a healing ministry and I know people come to church, uh, to receive healing and hands laid on them and all that other kind of stuff. But again, if you sick and it's something contagious, please stay home just stay home I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be real about that just just stay home i mean or or get hands laid on you and leave <laughs> or whatever come they say call the elders of the church you don't have to stay for service get one of the elders or the leaders and say hey i'm not feeling i come to have somebody to lay hands on me or call them and ask them to come to your house ah but please do not expose other people to your germs please this is it's just so not it's uncouth Please just stay home. Let's just be right there. Now, so getting back to the difference between a virus and a bacteria. A bacteria is, um, um, microscopically, they're different. They function differently. So you need a antibiotic for a bacteria. So how did we get to flesh-eating disease? Because we had all these people saying, I know my body. When I go to the doctor, I need an antibiotic. Okay, so you people have been being demanding and got all these antibiotics and it's really a virus and so what winds up happening the bacteria that is in your body become resistant so flesh eating disease is what we call methylene resistant uh, staph aureus or MRSA so what it does is so resistant it start eating you 
that's why they call it flesh eating disease because people have been so demanding and doctors have been so giving in to their patients requesting asking um, asking for antibiotics at a uh, drop of a hey uh, uh, ambassador hey Tyra I see you um, hey Joanne thank you for joining on hey Darnell hey Ar Arnell uh, hello hey Sean hey Phyllis thank you everyone for please like invite and share please so believe this or not that there are some viruses and bacteria that can infect the heart it's called cardiomyopathy so you got to be careful with that um, and some there are some bacteria that can affect the heart also strep throat strep throat has been known to cause heart problems if it's not treated appropriately so in those instances back to back we say bacteria should be used now for those of you who are self doctors out there hey Tina thank you for joining for those of you that are self doctors out there that um, when a doctor tells you to take all the antibiotics until they're all gone and you don't that also sets up resistance resistance bacteria which means they quit responding to bacteria so when you do take a back antibiotic and have a bacteria the bacteria are like oh this ba uh, antibiotic tastes good <laughs> I ain't going nowhere though so you guys have to make sure that you when you're giving your instructions for your from your doctor please take whatever they tell you the way they tell you to take it how to take it and if they tell you to take it until it's all gone do that now I believe in the natural stuff too, but I also believe if, if it's a dire situation, life-threatening, then we want a quick, immediate response. Yes, I do believe in pharmaceuticals, but I do believe in prevention in regards to putting your things in your body to keep your body healthy and strong. So that's why I recommend the products that I do when I come on. So you need to go to www.bw-center.com forward slash mm for medical money. Get the immune boost to keep your immune system up. And also to get the heart healthy stuff. It's all food. It's all natural products, all natural food. Um, the immune boost is uh, the, the patent is pending. So they don't list all the ingredients in there, but it's nothing that is pharmaceutical, okay? But it's all natural, all food. So those are the type of things that I do. Now I'm gonna give you guys a little tidbit what I do during this season. Um, I do do oil of oregano, um, and I also do yes, it's isogenics, Tyra. Yes, it's isogenics. It is. If you go to www.bw-center.com forward slash mm, the immune boost is isogenics and the heart health. You can put it in a a water juice or a shake, the shake that you already have, Tyra, you can add that to that. Um, it will help do that. Hey, Masia, thank you for joining. Please like, invite, and share. Um, we only got four minutes left, guys. So, um, hey, Dexter, thank you for joining on. Please catch it from the beginning. Hopefully, this will be help helpful for you all. I do all of oregano, and um, you're like, Dr. Grace, well, how do you use that? Um, you can get the... Um, I get the oil of oregano by itself and I actually um, make with a carrier of olive oil and for every two ounces I put 16 drops and then you have to hit it against your hand so it can be what we call diffused throughout the oil and um, I also give it to my grandbaby I also give it to my daughter um, especially when they feel like they're coming down with something all of oregano around here is uh, an everyday thing um, another thing that I love to use is silver we do have a silver product but I did not post that here but if you're interested in that you can contact us at www.bw-center.com at the website um, um, two drops no it's like 16 drops to two ounces so I have these little dropper bottles that I that I purchased, and I um, put six. I, I put, yeah, I put sixteen drops with for every uh, two ounce dropper bottle that I use for all of oregano. Or you can go to the health food store; they have all of oregano drops and capsules too um, that you can purchase and buy. Um, it helps. Um, it all of oregano is considered a natural antiviral and a natural antibiotic. So, um, so that's how do you use that? I use it for prevention. I take it when I feel led to take it or I feel like I'm coming down with something, I, I immediately start taking it. But my silver, um, I try to do at least once a week. 
Um, I don't do it every day. Do you put your oil of oregano in something to drink? You can, but I just put it under my tongue and hold it or just swallow it. Um, my mom, bless her 28-year-old uh, uh, self, she flips her age around. Um, she used her oil of oregano. She puts it on her food. She puts it on her salad and all that other kind of stuff. So, yeah, you can 16 drops for every two ounces. Yes, Tyra, absolutely. Um, and oil of oregano is excellent for that. It's also excellent for fever blisters um, because, like I said, I said it's uh, a natural antiviral or nat um, um, natural antibiotic. So you can put it on fever blisters. Um, and, and let's be, I know I'm getting a little bit off subject, but we are talking about viruses today. Flu is a virus, but it's also been known to, for, uh, for, you know, herpes is a fever blister. People don't like using that word, but a fever blister is a herpes virus, which is a cold virus. Anything that is above the waist is considered, um, considered herpes simplex one and anything below the waist is herpes simplex two. So all of oregano is good for any herpes virus. Hey, Johnny, my brother. Hey, hi, how are you? God bless you. I'm about to get off in a minute, guys. What time is it? I've been holding this thing here. It's 8.59, so we have a minute left. So I need you guys to go to www.bw-center.com forward slash mm for Medical Monday. Um, I talked to you guys, uh, uh, you know, it is Afro-American History Month. I gave you a little history about inoculation where the flu vaccine has come from, from the continent of Africa, from a slave that told his slave master what to do during the smallpox vaccine. His name is Ocinemus. Um, um, we don't really know where he's born from or where he was born, but like I said, you know, they didn't care. They were snatching, Af uh, snatching Africans off the continent continent of Africa for over 450 years so for where he was born and where he came from they didn't know but uh Reverend Cotton Mathers which was a Puritan at the time was well known for his medical expertise but most of his um information was coming from an African from Africa yes so vaccines the inoculation process has been not been used uh for centuries and it's well documented in effectiveness in fighting disease and keeping from the spread of disease. But the, mannering, the manufacturing process and the additives is what's the issue. So again, um, like I said, every medical person, every person's situation, medical history and their medical condition is subjective to their own personal doctor. Um, again, if you want to get in touch with me and have a consultation with me, we posted a link where you can book a time. Um, you get 45 minutes uh, to, to talk to me um, about you and your health on a personal level and I can make some um, 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 suggestions. Hey, Glenn, uh, Jonah Stott's husband. Hey, how are you? Thank you for joining on. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, yes, I forgot to mention that I am on YouTube. Uh, I have all my videos for the last year uploaded on YouTube. I talk about the flu vaccine on there too. So you can, I talk about heart disease. I talk about diabetes. I talk about natural remedies. I talk, I think I should have a video on there about natural things that's in your cabinet to help you with your health. So go to my YouTube uh, page, which is, um, Medical Monday. Grace Patterson, because there's another Medical Monday on there that's talking about medical marijuana. That's not me. Hmm. But go to Medical Monday, Grace Patterson on YouTube and peruse through those videos. Take time to invest, invest in you. The best uh, person or the best healthy person, well, this is what I say. The best patient is an educated patient. And hopefully you don't have to uh, be a patient patient for sure, but you know what I mean. Um, and you know, you are divine health, you are divine healing. Um, for those of you that are the son of my voice, the same saved to five filled with the precious Holy Spirit, always remember and know the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that resides and live in you. So you should be walking in the, be the epitome and a picture of health and anti-aging. Yes, you should not be looking you know, like, like my mother say, death worn over, whatever that means. But <laughs> you should not be looking broke down, toe down, toe down, toe, toe down from the flow down. I mean, you should be looking vibrant, healthy, happy, 
because of who you are in Christ and the God that you serve because you are a divine health you are a divine healing so and by the stripes of Jesus Christ you were healed so anything or any challenges that you may be dealing in, in your body I do create and declare that you're whole and healthy and not only should you be blessing your food but you should be blessing any products or anything else that you use to put in contact with your body be it makeup lotion all of that that has to be absorbed and have to be uh, eliminated through the body hey Javon thank you for joining on and again this is dr grace from the metro detroit area i gotta sign off now i guess i, I um hey dion thank you i got I, everybody is getting on now and i gotta go <laughs> please catch this please like invite and share this video i want it to go viral because i want people to be the best they can be from the inside out and um i don't want to help as many people as i can and social media gives me that venue to do that and um, please go to wwwbwgcenter for slash mm for medical money get the free download look at the products that are there please not only just look at them buy them get them be get them so and try them and tell me how you like them uh, because I feel good I, and I hopefully you guys say that I look good uh, I'm just not a, I am I have met the half century mark. So I'm, I'm, o I'm over that hump. I don't want to say over that hill, but <laughs> I have. And to God be the glory. He said he will preserve us and keep us. And our latter days will be greater than our former. But we have to do our part. He has done his part. So now we have to do our part. So thank you so much for... Um, Oh, thank you, uh, Tyra. Thank you for joining on. Please like my Olivia. I'm about to get off. All of you guys are getting on now. Hey, Phyllis, you do a wonderful job sharing good information. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Tyra. Thank to God be the glory. Um, um, I, I'm just excited about doing this, and I'm excited about the times that we're living in right now. Uh, we're may. Uh, hey, Tina. Thank you. I just want to say this to you guys. But those are a lot of you that are on here have work to do for the kingdom and you can only do it if your body is in the condition that it needs to be in um, for you to do the work even Moses at the time when he uh, made his transition there's a scripture that talks about that the devil fought angels for Moses body because it was in such pristine condition because he had a work to do and he did everything that he needed to do to preserve it. Not only from a natural perspective, but spending time with God. Anytime you spend time with God, there should be a rejuvenation and a replenishing and a restoration process that happened during, uh, doing, uh, as a result of prayer. So, hopefully, your health is a reflection of your time that you're spending not only here on medical Monday but the time that you're spending in, with the Lord in prayer and meditation on his word so I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in please like invite and share again www.bw-center.com forward slash mm for medical money get that free download and look at those products and purchase them I decree and declare that you're gonna do that and uh, next Monday we're gonna be another topic that'll be the last yeah, that'll be the last Monday in February. So um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna post another event and, and tell you what that topic is going to be, and then we're going into March. So uh, please, guys, let me know if there's particular subjects that you matter that you guys want to talk about. Um, I, I'm more than happy. Hey, Lisa, I'm about to uh, about to sign off now. Uh, my wife uh, Tyra had a friend you for the cleansing and dieting suggestions. She did. Oh, I have to go and see Tyra. I, I I have to go and check on that Johnny. I apologize. Like they like they say, charge it to my head, not my heart. Um, thank you so much everyone for joining on and tuning in. And I will see you um this Monday uh, at same time, same bat station, eight PM on Medical Monday. I appreciate you guys. You wanna talk about stroke recovery? That's a good one. We can talk about that. Um, thank you every Monday, AP. Yeah, okay, Phyllis. Look how bright the whites of her eyes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, to God be the glory on that. So I please I want you to be the best you that you can be from the inside out. Holy Spirit, food, energy. Yeah, my energy is off the chain. I gotta say that. These products, my energy be off the I can stay up late and get up early. 
And I know my daughter be looking at me crazy. Didn't you just go to bed and you up already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it has to go down sometimes. When you're on a mission, sometimes you got to do that. Hey, Ak Aki, my cousin. I'm about to sign off now. Please uh, get back on um, and catch the video from the beginning. Go to uh, Medical Monday uh, uh, Medical Monday YouTube page. And now all my videos are there on, on particular topics and subjects. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for joining in. Grace and peace. God bless. Bye for now.